Hello and a big warm welcome to you. My name is Marion Rose and this is another video in my Aware Parenting series. And this one is about why tantrums are therapy for kids. Now I got the idea for this video because I was just going on a bike ride a couple of hours ago and I was cycling around past various houses and I saw about a three year old child having a big, big tantrum standing outside the doors of the kind of French doors of their house and that big big tantrum you know that kind of big tantrum of the kind of the, the loudness of it the fullness of it the bigness of it and at that moment I wondered how are the parents feeling how are they responding because I couldn't see what was happening on the other side I could just see the little child standing on the other side of these doors and I couldn't see what the parents were doing and it gave me the idea to make this video for you because I call tantrums therapy for kids. Now, let's rewind a little bit. There, there have been so many different parenting paradigms over the years. If we look back some while, we would see that parenting used to be the pretty much the, the mainstream belief was tantrums are a kind of misbehavior. When children are tantruming, from that perspective they were doing they were misbehaving they were doing something bad or naughty and we needed to stop them in some way usually through some kind of punishment some kind of harshness or some kind of disconnection and then what happened is new beliefs about children came into our consciousness and then it was seen that tantrums were more like um, something that we needed to stop it was really indicating that a child was feeling distressed and we needed to stop those distressed feelings and then they would stop feeling distressed. And so instead of punishments, there would be distractions or um, he goes, no, look over there at the aeroplane or would you like a biscuit or some kind of way to stop the feelings. And then along came Aware Parenting. So Aware Parenting was devised by Aletha Salter, PhD. She's written several books. She's founder of the Aware Parenting Institute. You can find out more at awareparenting.com. And she really brought into the collective consciousness the idea that tantrums are neither misbehavior nor something that we need to try to kind of pacify, but they're actually this amazing natural inbuilt healing mechanism that all children have. And I wonder how you feel when you hear me say that. Let's go to the let's go back to the therapy piece again. Why do I say it's like therapy? If, if you've ever been to any kind of counselling or any kind of therapy, or you've ever had a big cry with a friend when you've had a really hard day and they've just listened to you and you've cried, or maybe you've been to a friend and you've tried to cry and they've tried to um, cheer you up with alcohol or chocolate or something to distract you, you'll probably know that at those moments when you're really just so upset and you just want to cry, just want to let those feelings out. And if you do let those feelings out, you feel kind of clearer afterwards. You feel relieved and you feel relaxed and you can concentrate more. You can think more clearly about what's happened and you just feel lighter and more relieved. Tantrums are just like that for kids. They're really this natural mechanism that, that children have to release all the feelings that children have, however much we aim to, to really meet their needs and listen to them and understand them, children have big feelings. They, they get easily frustrated when they're, maybe they're at a developmental kind of cusp and they're just about to learn some new thing, whether it be to crawl or to walk or to uh, ride a bike or to, you know, just something new. And I'm sure you've experienced that yourself. I certainly experience it sometimes on the computer and I'm just about to try to learn something new. I'm sure you've experienced that, that big frustration. Children feel frustrated a lot. They, they feel frustrated when they're not able to do things. They, they feel powerless when they, we get to choose so many things and they don't get to choose them. They feel upset when their little sister takes their favourite toy or someone at school I don't know, says, says some unenjoyable words to them or they get hit or, you know, just all the little, little things that we think of as little, but they're actually pretty big in a child's life. And then there are a whole other, other load of things like what happened to them 
when we were pregnant with them, what happened in their birth, what happened in their, those early weeks and months after they were born. All of those things are feelings that actually accumulate in their bodies. And they accumulate and accumulate and accumulate and what will often happen is one small thing will happen and that small thing will be enough to tip them into this big tantrum. It may seem like nothing at all. It's like, you know, we've said no to more screen time or another biscuit or whatever it is and suddenly they're having this big tantrum and we're, we might be thinking, what on earth is going on? That was, why are they having such a big reaction? Well, I'm sure, again, you can really resonate with this. Perhaps you've maybe had a hard day and lots of challenging things have happened, frustrations and miscommunications and, you know, maybe you're tired. Maybe you connect with your partner at the end of the day and you say one small thing and rah, you have a big reaction. <coughs> Excuse me. It's just the same thing. It's a release mechanism that's happening. So... If this resonates with you, this idea that tantrums are like therapy for kids, I'd love to tell you a bit more about how, if you had that understanding, then how can you respond? I want to add one more piece though. I trained as a psychotherapist in my 20s and worked as a psychotherapist for quite a few years. And what I found is that pretty much anyone and everyone who came to those therapy sessions, whether they were 25 or 55, they were all talking about how they were still kind of trying to deal with not being understood as children, not having their feelings accepted. They were still kind of battling with that. And that was part of what took me to really see that I probably could be much more effective in, in working in helping parents around parenting rather than actually kind of waiting for 30 or 50 years and helping, helping the adults then. Children having their feelings heard is an, is an amazing gift that we can give to them. If we neither punish them on the one hand when they have big feelings, nor try to distract them, but actually, there's a fly there, we actually just listen to them and let them express those feelings and be empathic and connect and I'm right here and I see you and, and you know, you, oh, you look really upset, you're feeling upset, those kinds of things can really make such a difference in a child's perspective and, and self-concept. So I said I'd tell you a few ideas about what happens if your child's just about to have a tantrum or they just started having a tantrum. The first piece is always about ourselves. So it's really to check in with how are you feeling? Maybe can you can remember this piece that I'm talking about now? It's not misbehavior, it's unlikely to be um, something that we really need to to stop of course we need to check in you know if they're if their brother's hitting them or their hands stuck I don't know under a chair or something of course if there are in the moment things that we need to sort out we need to protect them from of course that's the the top priority but if we've checked and really they're just going into a big tantrum we can really just connect with ourselves first and maybe connect with our bodies, just receive a breath, feel our bodies and just just kind of take one moment to get present ourselves and then really just to be with them, just to listen, just to be compassionate. Now, if they're already in a, having a big tantrum, the, way, the reason I, I liken it to therapy is because the tantrum in itself isn't what's healing, it's not just the releasing. If they're releasing out in the garden on their own, not so healing. It's the connection with us. It's the empathic connection with us that makes it a healing process. Just like therapy, that's what makes that healing. It's having someone empathically present with us. So if our child's kind of rah, rah, and kicking, arching their back, doing all that kind of stuff, it's important as well. We make them safe. So if they look like they're going to hit their head or, or so on, we're going to need to maybe put pillows in there or protect them from hurting themselves. And then we can really let them choose whether they want to come and cuddle in close. Often when having a big tantrum, they don't really want that. We just, so we just need to be close enough so that they know we're here. And we might say, you can find your own language. I like to say things like, I'm here with you. I'm listening. I really like to keep it pretty simple, actually. I'm here with you and I'm listening. And I see that you're upset are pretty much those kind of things that I say. But it's really just... It's not even so much the words, it's the kind of tone, the quality of your presence, just that you're showing them that you're really there with them. 
So really that's the first piece, checking out with ourselves, making sure they're safe, being connected enough, offering them some empathy and letting them know we're here. And then really just being with them and letting those feelings just come out and come out. We may find that it can be like a big crescendo and then the tears might lessen a bit and we might even remind them of that thing, you're really upset, I'm right here. And the paradox is when we remind them of uh, love, that's often when they might stop crying again more intensely, Rah! because when they feel that love, it's the same, I often say this, have you ever had a day when you're trying to not cry and maybe someone comes up to you and says, it's someone you care about, someone who, you know, a partner or friend or family member and they come up and they put their hand on your shoulder and they say, how are you, what's going on? It's almost impossible when we're really feeling that love and we're getting that eye contact to stop ourselves from actually just being with our feelings. It's the same with our children, even more so for them. When they feel that loving presence from us, it just gives them freedom just to let out some more feelings. So just to be, if you can be, just be with it throughout the whole process. And what you'll find, I'm sure you've experienced this, is, is every bit of those feelings they're releasing, they're actually literally coming out of their bodies, those feelings. They're getting released, all the stress hormones, that are in their tears can stay in stress hormones. I'll go off on a little tangent here. I don't know if you can see my eyes. I've been crying a little bit today because I got an insect in my eye. And they did an experiment. They found out that they did. They looked at college students, and one group of them had a, a cut onion, and they measured the tears. And another one, a group of students, watched a sad movie, and they measured the tears. And they found out that the, those tears were chemically different. The tears that we cry when we're sad or upset actually have all kinds of ACTH stress hormones in them that are actually getting released from our bodies. Tears that we cry when we've got an insect in our eye or there's a cut onion are, are different. They, they have, they're for a different purpose. So you can imagine every bit of crying or tantruming your child is doing, they're, they're um, reducing your therapy bills. <laughs> if they're 20 or 30 and they come and ask you for therapy and say, no, I yeah, did lots of tantruming. Anyway, bit of a joke. But I'm sure you've experienced that with your child. Maybe they've, they've been a bit kind of uh, 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 and a bit whiny and a bit oh, just really off and they have a big cry or tantrum. And then they're happy and they're connected and they want to cooperate and they're just smiley and maybe the thing that they couldn't do before that they were trying to do and they had the big cry about it or the tantrum and then they, they could actually concentrate and do that thing. I'm sure you've experienced that. So when we let our children let out those feelings, that natural release mechanism, they can return to more who they really are. And of course, at any point, any time, if it feels too much for you, you know, there are ways that you could try and calm them down or stop the feelings if you really just, if you're concerned that you're going to have a big reaction or you're going to do something hurtful, or you just can't listen anymore. But just to know those feelings are still sitting there and they're probably going to find some other opportunity to release those feelings. So tantrums are like therapy for kids. I'd love to, to know whether this resonates for you. I'd love to see how things go for you over the next few days as you explore this. If you want to learn more, uh, it's a great book by Aletha Salter, Tears and Tantrums. Put the book there, the camera's trying to focus on it. Um, you can have a look at Aletha's website, as I said, which is awareparenting.com. I also have lots of articles and videos and free courses and all kinds of things on my website which is marianrose.net. So if you've enjoyed this, please subscribe to my channel. I've got lots of aware parenting videos and plenty of other things too and I look forward to talking to you again.